Hello, this is James Tanner. Welcome to the Genealogy Star video blog. You can read my blog posts on Google Blogger, or you can view some of them here on my YouTube channel. You can also try a search for Genealogy Star. About 10 years ago, I began trying to distill the essence of genealogical research into some basic rules. I published the first six rules of genealogy back on July 1st, 2014 in a blog post entitled Six of the Basic Rules of Genealogy. This short list included the first and most famous basic rule of genealogy, when the baby was born, the mother was there. Since then, I have published eight more rules for a total of 14. When the entire genealogical world seems to be against you finding your ancestors, just remember these rules, and you will soon be on your way to finding that elusive ancestor. Rule number four is, there are always more records. This is one rule that you could argue about for hours. Many genealogists claim that they've reached a brick wall and that there are no more records for their ancestor. But what this really means is that the genealogist hasn't found the ancestor in the records that have been searched so far. However, before I go too far with this commentary, I need to point out that there really are people who cannot be found in the records that do exist, such as people who lived in extreme poverty and people who intentionally dropped out of the society where they lived. It is important to distinguish between individuals who are left out of records or manage to avoid being recorded from the concept of somehow the records are not available. Let me explain what I mean with an example from the U.S. Federal Census. There are a multitude of reasons why any one individual or family may not be found in, in a given census record. There are also a multitude of other records that may contain information about that missing individual or family. The idea that there are always more records refers to the fact that it is highly unlikely that any individual researcher will have the time and resources to look through all of the records that exist and may contain information about a particular individual or family. For example, when was the last time you researched utility records or irrigation records? How many times have you looked at local parking violation records? Have you ever searched farm co-op records or government subsidy allotment records? Another common complaint is that the county courthouse burned. The real question should be, what kinds of records survived the fire? Were all the local church records burned? In my experience, most researchers look at less than a dozen different types of records. Rule 4 points out that this superficial research is far from complete. Here is another example. This book has 873 pages listing and explaining hundreds of different types of British records. Most of these records are probably unknown to all but the most expert and dedicated British genealogists. One of the best places to begin to see how many records there are in the world is to look at the FamilySearch.org research wiki. There are currently over 100,000 articles listing records from all over the world. Rule 4 is more of a challenge than it is an absolute statement about the availability of records. Remember, rule four is, there are always more records. This concludes some of the basic ideas of the fourth rule of genealogy. Now there are 10 more rules of genealogical research to go. In between all my other activities, I will be posting additional short videos highlighting each rule.